So the first two issues that we agreed on are, um, as San Antonio residents, we want options to remain in our community um, throughout throughout our life. So we want the ability to remain in the communities that we choose for as long as we can. Okay, thank you. Um, and our second issue is um, affordable housing options for all residents. So as a San Antonio <laughs> resident, I want all San Antonio residents to have um, options for quality, choice, um, and affordable homes that they choose. Okay, and your solution? Uh, our solution is um, we want uh, the city um, or the county or state to facilitate uh, easier access uh, for private citizens to financing um, and the navigation of development regulations and processes for local um, and individual residents. So okay. our use case was in our community. I'm going to ask you to stop right there because we, we, we're asking for one minute and if we could, if I let you go over more, more than one minute, I've got to let everybody else go. If you don't mind, please. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to ask you just to state your two issues and your solution and then we'll move to the next group, please. Okay, so the, the, the solution was, um, you know, as residents, when we see, like on the panel, when we see that there are homes available in our neighborhoods but need to be rehabilitated, um, it's a lot more difficult for me as a private citizen to secure a loan that would allow me to purchase that home and make the investments to bring that home uh, back up to its um, original beauty. Okay, thank you. Jamie? Just go go to the next. Just go around the next table. Hi. First of all, I want to say thank you to the city for putting this together. This is pretty amazing. I appreciate that. My name is Tammy Johnson. What I'd like to see with our table, we talked a lot about how the investors are changing the face of the city and taking the homes out of the community, away from the people that grew up here. I'd like to see investors to be held more accountable. If they're making money in our city, we should be looking at them giving back, whether it's a tax or something that allows that fund to go into the community for affordable housing, down payment assistance, but I do think our investors need to be held more accountable for the money that they're making. Thank you. Jenny, why don't you just stay with them because they're only going to have a minute, so. Okay, this is table 26. So the two issues that uh, the table came up with, one is the need for more transparency. So the table says that when we have these meetings, solutions are discussed, but they are not followed through on. So transparency. The second issue is gentrification. Uh, the issue of displacement of uh, legacy homeowners. In terms of a solution, the table said that there's a need for an ethics board to hold developers, investors accountable. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so as with the other tables, a big issue is affordability. Um, lack of relationship between representatives and the people that the decisions being made are affecting, um, and that it is a greater economic issue involved if people do not have the wages and the opportunities to be able to afford these homes. This is a bigger picture thing that our representatives need to look at all of the things that are affecting people not being able to um, have homes. and and the um, developers uh, not creating affordable housing. Um, and some of the solutions that um, we mentioned are representatives uh, building more relationships with the people who are being affected, and also collaboration between um, nonprofits that are offering um, affordable housing solutions and less competition so that they can all get on the same page so that more people are able to have affordable housing options. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, some of the things are similar, but one of the problems is to make sure that we have a clear definition of what affordability means and who is 
is for. There seems to be some mixed um, understandings of what that means. Another problem is a lack of coordination among city departments. Uh, you have to go to various departments that have a very specific issue and they can't plan effectively. A couple of different solutions. Uh, one is to use race and equity as a lens to make sure uh, that that meets the definition of affordable. Possibly a suggestion was made that we use the lens of city employees. If two uh, lower wage city employees cannot afford a home, then that's not affordable. Um, the second uh, solution is to make sure that incentives are actually something that would be used effectively for affordable housing and not just for developers. Um, developers, we also should partner with nonprofit developers if we're going to use that lens. Thank you. All right, so two of the, uh, the issues that were discussed by our community members. Uh, the first one was uh, looking at uh, development impacts, uh, specifically environmental impacts, drainage, and some of the other issues, um, and their impacts on neighboring homes, not just the site itself. Um, another issue we were looking at was uh, code enforcement, whether that be noise from, uh, from development, you know, from restaurants or bars nearby, um, and also trash. Uh, one of our community members mentioned that they, they felt they didn't feel completely clean for the first few months that they had lived here in San Antonio. Um, so our solutions that we were looking at, um, our main solution was increased code compliance um, to help ensure beautiful and safe neighborhoods. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm representing table 23. Two of the issues that were brought up were um, having accountability. Accountabil accountability for landlord, for the city, for private developers, and to address the power imbalances when it comes to land use and renting. The other issue is having real authentic community engagement. Um, balance the powerful voice with the community voice because um, you know, sometimes you have the powerful voice, or the community voice that gets drained out by the powerful voice. Also, uh, in terms of engagement, is meeting people where they're at. In order to have authentic community engagement and participation and contribution, is to meet people where they are and to caution against the process getting hijacked. Uh, our solution is the table came up with developing a sort of community benefits agreement something that can be incorporated in the discussions with uh, development. And development is not just, you know, encompasses everything. You have to invert uh, the benefits that it will have on the community challenge that we're going as well. Thank you. I represent uh, Table 22. We had a lot of discussion, a lot of the same issues came up, even how some of the families do not live in a uh, dignified manner, whether they pay all their bills and their taxes. So the problem that we came uh, in agreement with lack of community land trust, lack of incentives for middle housing and small community development. And the solution to begin with, we need to make sure the task force members represent residents and not just businesses, because San Antonio must think of families and not just the dollars. Our group came up with these um, problems and solutions. <coughs> Develop comprehensive plans for affordable housing and infill development. Have continuous community meetings and input for the solution. Equitable taxes and tax incentives develop affordable financial mechanisms. Weave affordable housing into fabric of existing neighborhoods. Thank you. Hello, I'm representing Table 18. My name is Nikana Chambers. Uh, one of the issues that we discuss, uh, of course, uh, in accompaniment to everything else that's been uh, stated is accessibility. Um, we were talking about our senior citizens here in San Antonio, especially on, on 
the west side of town and talking about how there's issues with getting to and from you know, medical appointments, uh, groceries, basic necessities. So we talked about transportation, accessibility is a huge issue there. And we also talked about the uh, technological infrastructure of accessibility, right? So if you're getting communicated with the email, uh, but you don't necessarily have a broadband connection at home, come on, right? So, so we're talking about that sort of thing, you know, the technological infrastructure of accessibility. The other issue that we did bring up as well um, was our traffic. And, you know, that's not something that any of us are surprised to hear, right? Um, we, so a lot of us live off of 281, you know, 410, 1604, and in those areas, of course, the congestion is there, and, and what it felt like is that there's just a lack of, of inclusive planning uh, there for the, uh, for the neighborhood uh, to make sure that we talk about congestion, we talk about uh, traffic routes with, with, with regard to work plans every day, right? So if you know who lives there, you know where they work, you can plan a little bit better. So we talked about that, congestion. One of the solutions that we did bring up um, that I thought was Something noteworthy is the emerging housing service idea that Ms. Kaya here was talking about. Um, I think we're talking about your average citizen in, in San Antonio. You need to think about uh, the fact that we have the need for permits for housing for everyone. Uh, and I, I want to thank Mr. Terry for talking about that on the panel. But with that permit supportive housing comes things like emergency emergency services. I think we can really talk about think about that. Thank you, LeJuan. So thank you. I'm Mike Phillips, representing Table 19. Um, one of the challenges and, uh, that we see is, is inner-city uh, single-family home rehab. And our solution is a city charter change to allow a funding stream for a program for single-family home rehab in the inner city. Private developers should be required to have 20% low-income units if they get any incentives from the city or county, and they should pay a living wage. Good morning. My name is Elena Camarillo. I'm representing the Table 20. Um, a lot of the issues have already been discussed, but just adding to it, uh, looking at issues, internet services, bike and pedestrian facilities, and having identity and streetscaping for neighborhoods. Uh, balancing economic development with affordable housing. Two solutions that we had were uh, streamlining the, the housing Forms, uh, also potentially automating the housing application process so that we can also, it, it'll be automated so that it can also have a referral to separate programs. And the second thing was a policy to protect renters and tax valuations, potentially having a landlord and tenant affairs office. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joshua Cronley, and I'm uh, representing Table 15. Uh, so in addition to some of these great uh, topics that have already been brought up, two things we wanted to mention is, one, we feel that there's a lack of focus on nonprofit engagement. We talked about engaging private developers, but we think nonprofits need uh, a seat at the table as well. Uh, we also want to talk, another issue is the, uh, the barriers to develop uh, and improve new affordable homes. Sometimes those can be uh, too mounting for organizations to be able to do uh, work. And one of the solutions we had was to look at an administrative board uh, that would help look at UDC codes or the unified development codes the city uh, has in place. Sometimes there are uh, major barriers that can easily be overcome if we had a board that uh, could make simple exemptions, could review uh, development plans and uh, come to a consensus and agree to uh, allow a development to go forward. So. Thank you. Thank you. Table 14. We identify the lack of education for homeowners, whether they're experienced or not. We also identify that um, there's an inferior quality of some parts of town. Uh, and we believe the inspection of code compliance is an issue. We believe that uh, understandable and easy access to our responsibilities home ownership would be something that the city could help. Thank you. Hi, I'm Isaac Bernal. I'm representing Table 13. 
um, like many of the other tables, we a couple of issues that we identified was this one, that the, what is the definition of affordability for San Antonio um, administrators versus homeowners to kind of have some of disconnect there. Another one was the processes um, for how to go about getting a home, how to go through the application, uh, how to go through departments is often convoluted and that is complicated. And so one of the solutions that we discussed was to have more of a streamlined process where departments are talking with each other, where they're talking with neighborhood, where they're talking with uh, nonprofits and to help with that in terms of helping solve the process as well. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ian Benavides, and I'm representing Table 12. Two of the issues we discussed, and some of them have already been said, but I think this takes a little bit of a different take on them, is uh, a weakness on renters' rights in Texas, and the knowledge of renters to be able to utilize their rights to their full potential. And the other one is the many support services that are out there for homelessness. Um, there's different divisions, different nonprofits, and so one of the solutions we have is to make a nonprofit coalition and this coalition would bring together all of these different entities that are working towards solving these issues, and at the same time would be able to lobby our, our legislator for stronger renters' rights and educate uh, all of our renters. So. Thank you. Hi. I'm uh, Grace Richards. Um, a lot of the things that were said, uh, we we have those on our list, but. Um, one item that we have talked about is mental health and the fact that in affordable housing there isn't policies that really protect um, residents that have, let's say, children with mental health problems or whatever, and so they're afraid to call the police on, on things because they, they'll be told they'll be kicked out. So policies need to be looked at for those uh, people that are uh, that have children or, or have or are residents there that um, those those be considered. The other thing is that um, they talked that we talked about the, the fact that services and goods um, are different in uh, say let's say one area of town to the other, and they even talked about even what's given at food bank can be different from 1604 to the east side, and that those things have to be um, equitable, and it's an it's a real issue. And one alternative on housing um, is is that to have um, different criteria for lending, to look at, at um, things sort of like um, if someone had paid their rent on time for the last five years, why can't that be a criteria that they would be paying their mortgage on time? For, you know, and so things like that are you know, different criteria for banks to look at. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Zeke Romo. I'm with uh, Table 5. We basically have discussed and agreed with all the uh, issues that have been brought up. The affordability, like of affordable housing, like the incentives for uh, local residents to purchase those homes. And we really want to look at making sure that the local residents benefit of all the housing growth that's going to continue and grow here in San Antonio. One of the ways we or uh, solutions we're offering is the uh, integration of a job creation workforce development component into the uh, housing uh, component to make sure that people get trained in the construction industry so that they get jobs in the construction industry and all these houses are going to be built. Money's going to be made. We want to make sure that the residents benefit from it. Thank you. Good morning, Chris Lazaro, Table 6. Uh, one of the issues that came up was the concern about poor infrastructure, including the lack of uh, street, sidewalk, and utility maintenance, and how that goes hand in hand with housing. The second being a need for subsidized repair for uh, both low income homeowners as well as for owners of older apartment buildings. And then one uh, area of um, an idea for a solution. There was actually consensus at the table that there's a need for a consolidated or unified location where people can find all the housing regulations as well as the programs that are available. Thank you. 
Good morning. My name is Christina Castaño Bradshaw. I'm with BM. Um, we had great conversation at our table. Some of the needs that we identified were that we need better utilization of housing funds. Um, that they come to our area, but we need to make sure that they're hitting the people that actually need them. Uh, we need more public-private partnerships as well. Some of the solutions that were discussed make developers have better requirements for affordable housing and enforcement of those requirements, rent control, incentives for co-ops, help senior citizens in funding their taxes in the gentrifying neighborhoods, education and outreach for people that are interested in home mortgages, home ownerships, and a plan with metrics with a scorecard that matters. Thank you. Um, um, my name is Claudia Sanchez and we're table um, eight. So one of the um, issues that we were talking about at our table was the fact that a lot of the developers that are going into our community are, look, are not really looking into a lot of the details when they're doing the plans as far as like lighting, uh, safety, making sure that we have emergency, um, for, you know, to reach to those areas. Um, for example, buses, um, that we have an, an adequate transportation for our community, such as people that don't have cars. Um, and another um, issue was the, the fact that, for example, um, a lot of our community is not aware of a lot of the programs that are being offered, such as the ones that we heard with the panel this morning, it's not getting out into our communities where they know what the programs are, the options, the help that they can get. So those are some of the, the issues, just having better communication between the city and our community so that they know the help that they can receive. Thank you. Good morning, buenos dias, Jeanette representing the community members at Table 9. One area that's already been noted is transportation, particularly integrated transportation between walkability and accessibility. The second topic of issue was special populations, particularly those that are substance use disorders, older Americans, and mental health. So one of the solutions is the development and implementation of inclusionary zone policies that acknowledge and specifically address these populations. Thank you. Good morning, Eric Braxo, representing Table 10. Uh, we were excited to have heard a lot of the problems and solutions that we identified previously been mentioned. So I'll just share one uh, problem that we identified being lighting. And someone at our table shared the example of uh, an area of her street not having good lighting. Her vehicle was broken into and she's experienced identity theft for uh, several years since and it has impacted her credit report. So, it shows the long-term impact on her um, her economic situation because you know, tracing back to lighting. So the solution that we identified for that issue was more lighting. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, <laughs> I'm Barbara from Burford, representing Table Four, and two of our problems were there's not enough resources to address the aging housing stock. And another issue was. Current zoning policy is encouraging sprawl and making housing less affordable. So one of the solutions were, were recommended was to update zoning requirements to allow for more incremental growth, especially in the city. And then another um, solution tacked onto that was to make it easier for small scale developers to rehab houses and to do in build development. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are at table three, uh, and one of the broad uh, frames that we talked about very briefly was that uh, as we think about housing, that San Antonio is still uh, one of the cities in the United States with the most increased segregation, and so then how does that affect housing? 
of the issues, the two major issues that we addressed were gentrification as a result of the city's growth and development policies. So uh, let us re-examine uh, the growth and development policies intensively, which I think we're doing here. And another problem, of course, that others have mentioned is the city's maintenance, uh, infra uh, infrastructure and enforcing zoning code compliance uh, regulations. Uh, finally, our solution is policy changes, obviously, so thank you for the opportunity to, to address uh, policy. So when the city incentivizes development, the community should have affordable housing. The most affordable housing is the housing we are in today. Programs, incentives should be increased and expanded for owner-occupied rehabilitation. Finally, as a result, as a right, homeowners should be able to age in place. Thank you. Hello everyone, um, my name is Annie and I'm representing and I'm speaking for all the great ideas that came out of um, table two. So kind of reiterating the thought of, uh, you know, oftentimes trying to locate resources and programs can be cumbersome, trying to identify public, private, city, county, state, federal. So just reinforcing that idea of a one-stop shop, um, especially some of our table members work with some of those special populations that were mentioned about protecting and you know, the rising cost of housing affordability. But taking it a step further, not just having uh, resource coordination, but also thinking about it as an education piece. You know, we often speak of preparing kids for college. Why don't we prepare people for financial health and home ownership? So adding that other layer on the tool. Another thing, uh, great ideas that came out of our group, you know, we spoke about um, wanting to have that continued community outreach, um, communication, the way we message things, and in that messaging, being realistic that our city is growing. You know, as mentioned, uh, 100 million people before 2040. Don't shoot me, SA tomorrow, people, if I got that wrong. But, um, you know, the reality is that more people are coming to San Antonio, so the way that we message and prepare for that is really essential. And some of those barriers and not wanting our neighborhoods to change are kind of compounding that affordability program, crisis that we're, that we're experiencing. And so just being realistic that we're growing, we're changing, and having city leadership communicate that and getting in front of it and engaging those residents. So instead of learning about projects after the fact, learning about them before and getting those residents and neighborhoods involved, but also on the flip side, neighborhood associations being realistic that we can't just have the reluctance, we have to have honest conversations that people need somewhere to live and we just have to be honest about that and the way we communicate that. Thank you. I'm Anissa Shell, and uh, a lot of the ideas that we discussed were also obviously previously discussed. Um, one of the big things that uh, we talked about, which has been mentioned, is the need for the rehabilitation of our existing housing stock. Um, it is the most affordable housing that we currently have because it already exists. Um, and that includes housing like mobile homes as well. Um, although the economic struggles have been addressed, um, nobody, no one has really addressed the title issues that can sometimes come with legacy housing. Um, it becomes really difficult to uh, finance anything if you don't have a clear title on a house. Um, so a solution for that that we discussed um, was the city offering legal help for um, family legacy housing. Uh, getting that title clear is a, is a barrier that we can remove to help people rehabilitate the housing they have. Um, also, we had hoped that the city could maybe be proactively targeting places like mobile home parks that need rehabilitation and assisting those homeowners as well. Um, related to that is taxes. We feel that um, Commercial properties are not paying their fair share, and it's creating, it's creating an undue burden on our homeowners, um, and especially those legacy homeowners where the previous generation may have had a tax cap for being over 65. When they inherit that home, the tax value immediately increases so much that they often can't keep the home in their family. Thank you. I think that's everybody, right? Everybody on the tables. Thank you so much. The what the what we're gonna do. You
you have a comment card, if you would please be sure to fill that out because what we want to do is collect all the worksheets that are on your table. If you have, you want to turn your worksheet in, please turn it in. But the, the, the uh, recorder also has worksheets. So please be sure and give those to your facilitator. Or